Hello and welcome to the Pete Brayley Show. I appreciate so much the fact that you uh, tuned in and you're checking us out. Before we meet our guest uh, for the show, I just want to point out that we try to shine the spotlight on some of the people that make our life more enjoyable, more interesting here in Greater New Bedford and Southeastern Massachusetts. So if you know of someone that you think we should have on, please let me know. You can find me on, you can send me a message on Facebook. I'm on X. You can find me uh, on X at Pete Braley, or you can email Show at gmail.com. That's Show at gmail.com. Our guest on this episode is Tim Peterson, who is the owner and operator and a physical therapist at Synergy Physical Therapy in Fairhaven. I wanted to have Tim on because we're all getting older, and uh, if not today, you may soon need a physical therapist. So, Tim, welcome to the show. Thanks, Pete. Glad to be here. I do want to say, uh, full disclosure, I've known Tim for years. We go way back. We go way Did back. Did you know, Pris- was was my wife a babysitter of not yours? Not for me, but but one a of my, my best friend, Yeah, she was his babysitter, and so I've known you guys since I was probably about 10 or 12 years old. Okay. Um, And uh, full disclosure here, Tim has put me back together uh, (laughs) several times. In fact, after I had a stroke several years ago, uh, Tim asked me what my goal was for therapy. I don't know if you do that with all your patients or what. Yes, we do. My oldest daughter was getting married at the time, and I said, I want to walk her down the aisle. And you said, not only will you walk her down the aisle, you'll do it without your cane. And you were right. And you worked really, really hard. Was, you did. You worked really, really hard. Now, how did you know that? That I mean, you knew that you could get me to that place, or I knew was from, that a way to challenge me? It was both. It, you know, I, I knew how hard you would work. I knew that you were goal-oriented. Um, I knew from where you were starting at that the improvement you'd make would be possible. Um, and I remember, I remember having you in the gym with the elastic tied around your waist, having you pull me down the floor. <laughs> I remember challenging you walking backwards around oh, the cones. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> um, you, you, but you worked hard. There was never anything that I said, let's try this, that you weren't willing to try and do. And uh, it paid off. Yeah. I mean, you do great. Let's go back. You're, you're originally from Dartmouth, right? I'm originally, I grew up in Dartmouth, went to middle school and high school in Dartmouth, yeah. Okay. And how did you get into physical therapy? Was that, was that what you wanted to do, young Tim um, Peterson? I went to my guidance counselor in high school and I said, I don't want to go through medical school. It's too much school. Okay. What should I do? And he said, gee, I just sent somebody off to physical therapy school. Why don't you check it out? Um, I shadowed uh, a few therapists in the area. And uh, as a matter of fact, I just ran into uh, one of the first people that I ever shadowed, I ran into last year. And she said, gee, I, I don't know if you remember, Matt. I said, how could I forget you? You're the reason that I went into therapy. Oh, I, you wow. know, I loved shadowing her. And um, off I went, uh, Springfield College. And uh, after that, worked for Braintree Hospital for a while, Clifton Rehab in Somerset, mm-hmm. and then started Synergy in Fairhaven. How long ago was that? 2010 started. is when I opened Synergy. Uh, we were over in the CVS Plaza back then. Right, right. And now we're across from the police and fire station now. On Washington, Washington Street. Washington Street, yep. Right. Uh, I would assume your industry has changed a lot since, what would you say, the 90s? Uh, yeah, I started practicing in 1990, and it has changed tremendously. I mean, the advent of managed care uh, has turned the thumb screws on, on everybody. Um, when I shadowed, uh, back before I went into school, uh, I remember a woman telling me, I said, oh, how long have you been in therapy for? She said, oh, it's my back. I've been here for two years. And um, now if we get authorization sometimes for two months, that's a lot. I mean, it's it's not the kind of thing where people just go and go and go forever. Right. Um, you know, we, we, we have to make progress. We have to get people better. We have to have goals. Uh, and I remember in my case, uh, the insurance said I had two more visits and what, you, you went to the doctor? Like, no, he needs more. Right. So. We, and so sometimes we have to, our, our records, our notes always have to tell a story. Mm-hmm. Specifically for, for that reason, that if somebody needs more therapy, we have to be able to justify it. We have to right. be able to send that off to somebody. So, I noticed on your uh, website homepage, it says, good health starts with you. It does. So explain that a little bit. 
uh, everybody is responsible for their health. So, you know, most, I talk to a lot of people and they get to me, how did this happen? We don't do maintenance on our bodies, most of us. Right. Uh, we're not gym people, we're not exercising at home. Uh, so we get weak, we get tight, we have muscle imbalances. Um, so the first thing that, that happens when somebody starts therapy with me is they get exercises for home. Everybody gets two exercises, sometimes three, on the first day. Mm -hmm. And I will be very upfront with people that if you don't do what I ask you to do, if you're not an active participant in your program, I can't help you. We won't get carryover. So it has to come from the person that I'm seeing, and we can go from there. I, I got to tell you that uh, I have a number of people ask me, because I've been... Yes. I, what did I, I think I counted last. I've had eight surgeries, but, you know, both yep. knees, both shoulder, both hips, the Achilles <laughs> tendon went out. Then we had a stroke. Yeah, just about, for good you're measure. about to do back with us any time. I know, I know. <laughs> um, but I have people ask me, they're like, did you go and, and was, the, was the therapy good for you? And I say, yes, but you have to do your homework. You do. You can, because would, what it, what was I seeing you twice a week? Yeah. So those other five days, right. I still got to be doing it. Right. And we can't act as a gym. So as much as people will come to us and say, "Well, I like coming here. It helps makes me do my exercises." We we're not personal trainers. We can't keep people coming just to do that. There always has right. to be advancement, and you have to need the skills of a therapist for your insurance company to pay because we're it, it's more expensive than a, than having a trainer. Um, I learned so. I was going to say, the, the, the other thing that, that goes along with that is, I'll tell people on the first day of therapy, if you come to me and don't do your exercises, you'll go back to the doctor or, or a month or two from now, you'll say, I went to therapy, I tried that thing. Didn't work. It didn't really help. And it won't be therapy's fault, it will be your fault for not participating. Right. It's easier for us to care and help you if, if you care about it. Because so. right. it's so easy. On, on my yeah. part, it's so easy to say, I'm a little sore today, I'm oh, not yeah. going to do it. Oh, you yeah. Know? And, and we get that. You know, we get people are sore. We get that they don't have the, the mat tables that we use at home. The bed is soft. The couch is the wrong level. Right. We understand that. But you have to kind of make do. have to kind of work through. And as a rule for me, I don't give people more than five or six things to work on at home. It becomes overwhelming right. for them. Yep. I want them to focus on the things that I give them. Um, and, and I know that it takes a certain amount of time during the day, so I, I don't want people to become overwhelmed with that. I learned something today uh, on the website. I learned that Massachusetts is a direct access state yes, and that you can seek evaluation by a physical therapist without having a doctor's order. Yes. Is, is that new? No. no. Um, it, it's been around for a long time. Um, I will say that uh, our lobby, our, our agency, uh, the American Physical Therapy Association, nobody does a great job at marketing that. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, some therapists, it makes them nervous, too, to be the first point of access for people. But okay. you can always call a physical therapist and say, I have a shoulder problem, a knee problem, I have this, that, the other thing, and I'd like an evaluation. Some insurances will require that we get um, a prior authorization or a referral from their primary care physician's mm -hmm. office. Um, for Medicare, we have to send over our findings and plan of care. So basically what we're going to do and for how long we're going to do it to their primary care to have it signed off. But the evaluation, you can always come and see us. Uh, and we'll always coordinate with somebody's primary or their orthopedic doctor or whoever it is that they want us to. Yeah. So that they're, they're looped in with, with what we're doing and how people are responding. Uh, I know you're incredibly busy. In fact, we had a heck of a time just scheduling this when our yes. schedules will get. Is that because the population's getting older and, and our parts are wearing out? Or <laughs> it, it is a little bit of that. You're probably it, it busier is. than you've ever been, I would, th I would we, think. We always tend to be busy. We, okay. we do. Uh, the population is aging, so people have aches and pains. Um, we have a, a mix of everything from eight years old all the way up to 98 eight years, years old. old, huh? Yeah, we, we don't see what, what I would term neurodevelopmental pediatric patients. So anybody who um, has a neurologic condition that, that is giving them problem or, or developmental delays, that's mm -hmm. a whole other specialty. Um, and, and therapy has a whole bunch of different specialties. But anything orthopedic from a, from a young child all the way up through a senior citizen. Are you um, seeing more... Uh Young athletes? We see lots of young athletes. Yeah. Um, and, and again, that, that falls to a lot of muscle imbalances, weaknesses. 
Uh, a lot of kids play uh, are playing a lot of one teams. sport, right? <laughs> I wanted to ask you about yeah. that because, and I've heard professional athletes yeah. say, yeah. The best thing you can do for your body is to play four sports. There's multiple. You want because to, you're using different Well, that goes to that muscles, old cross-training right? philosophy. You want to yeah. cross-train your body. But, you know, uh, one of the things, especially with shoulders, that I, I always find, uh, especially in athletes, throwing athletes, people's rotator cuff is really weak. I'll have somebody come to me, oh, my shoulder. It can be a high school athlete. can be an adult. doesn't matter. I give them a two-pound weight to start to work on their rotator cuff lying on their side. And you'd be surprised. They get to that second set of, the second repetition, like, oh, this is easy. Hold on. They get to that second set, and they're like, oh, that's getting a little harder. They get to the third set, and they're trying to raise up. And I say, look, you're, you're rotating. Look how weak it is. You can't do two pounds 30 times. Wow. So people get weak. Yeah. Um, in the senior population, and the, the adult population, um, hip and knee problems, a lot of times I'll find uh, that the, the ability to raise your leg up to the side um, is and hold it there against some pressure from me is very weak. And the problem is that the muscle on the side of your hip and the back of your hip, their primary function, even though I might test it that way, is to keep your pelvis level. And when that muscle is weak, your pelvis wants to, every time you pick okay. up the opposite foot, your pelvis has to stabilize. Okay. And if, if you can't even hold against my pressure pushing your leg down, if you're trying to get your 10,000 steps a day in, yes. that muscle gets tired. And it pulls on the side of your hip, so you end up with bursitis, you end up with tendonitis, you end up with some low back pain, mm -hmm. you end up with some knee pain because you're, you have compensations through all those levels. Oh, okay. Um, so th actually, rotator cuff and, and hip, what we call abduction, that, that out to the side motion, um, two of my biggest soapboxes to get yeah. people to, to strengthen those. I wanted to ask you uh, today if there are things you know, we, we can all do to, to keep us mobile as we get older. I would assume number one is to get off the couch. Get, get off the couch. You gotta move. Get off the couch up and down 10, 10 repetitions, three sets, twice a day. <laughs> up, up and down, that's, that's a great exercise. Just standing up, Just down. stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. It's a great exercise. Nice. Um, again, that, just taking a little elastic band or lying on your side and, and kicking that leg out to the side. Um, okay. I, I demonstrate for a lot of those patients you know, what happens. Sometimes in a stroke patient, you'll see, and I think you did it in the beginning too, is that muscle is paralyzed in the hip. And so you see that hip kind of throw way out to the side right, right. as they step and it throws. Um, and that's weakness, that's paralysis of that muscle. So that's an extreme example of it. But um, strengthening the hips is, is huge because it prevents hip, knee, and back problems. All connected, huh? Yeah. 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 Um, you know my wife, Priscilla. I do. She is Lovely a woman. Uh, Lovely woman. Thank you. She is a paramedic, <laughs> and uh, she gets a number of calls in the early morning hours. Yeah. I'm talking like 4 o'clock. From people who get up to use the bathroom mm -hmm. and fall down. Mm -hmm. They don't necessarily, she, you know, sometimes she'll say they, they have throw rugs and right. they trip on those. Right. But sometimes they just, they fall down. Are there things, I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. I've gotten up sometimes at 3 in the morning yeah. and the knees don't, they're not awake yet or whatever. Yeah. Are there things we can do to, to keep our... Sit for a minute. Let your blood equalize. Okay. Sometimes it's, it's um, blood pressure that as you sit up, blood changes position. Right. So if you get up too quickly and you get a little dizzy, um, it's from blood changing position in your body. Um, standing for a minute once your feet are on the floor. Just so just that you're, there. you're, because you get feedback through all of your joints and say, okay, I'm about to do something. So if you sit up fast, start to move, your body's not necessarily ready. Okay. Everything is still in its resting state. So um, those would be the two first things in the middle of the night. And if you are someone who knows that you have that problem, keep a cane or a walker nearby. Okay. It, it's better That's to right, be safe my, than sorry. My cane, I sleep upstairs and my cane is downstairs, <laughs> which... <laughs> Well, I figure yeah. I'm in my listen, house. I, I, I know the area. That, well, I got and, a handrail. And, and listen, those excuses are the, the reasons that people fall all the time. My grandmother, when she was 91, fell and broke her hip. She, I asked her, I said, where was your cane? Well, I was holding on to your grandfather's arm. But I went over to get some, they were, they were in a fast food place. She said, yeah. I went over to get some napkins and straws. Not thinking. And I fell. Yeah. And I said, well, you see, your cane wasn't there. <laughs> His arm wasn't there. <laughs> so you needed to have it nearby. Um, that's a big one. Is people people think that they're safe sometimes, and yeah. while you might be okay during the day when the light is on and you're you've been moving around, 
at night, suddenly it's dark, you're disoriented, you're not moving. It's a whole different situation. So it's better to keep it by the bed. Before we get started today, we were talking here in the studio about, oh, I have this problem. <laughs> do you face that? And, and I, I think I know the answer because I do this to my daughter, who's yeah. an athletic trainer. You yes, know, Kat. I do. And I, I, I'll call her. Hi, I need my, my athletic <laughs> trainer. She'll go, what'd you do now? So do you have people uh, in the family always calling you and say, hey, Tim, I, I got a little... The, calling me or um, holidays. <laughs> Invariably at the holiday. We're all together and there's somebody who will say, you know, do you have just a couple of exercises that you could give me because this is hurting or that is hurting? And I was just telling you a story. I was recently on a cruise and we met a, a, a really nice family and one of the women said, would it be weird if I asked you about my foot? <laughs> so, yes, yeah, happens all the time. Um, my, my standard answer is, look, I can give you a couple of things. That's not truly physical therapy, but try these out and, and, and then come see me. So. It'll help. And the other thing we do with Kat is we watch football together. We have yeah. Football Sunday. Yeah. And when a guy gets injured, we always go, all right, Kat, what do you got? <laughs> and nine times out of ten, yeah. she, she'll say right away, oh, I think he did this. It, yeah. It's ACL, PCL. Oh, yeah. I never knew there were so many CLs. Yeah, right? there's a lot of them. So she'll say MCL or ACL, and then 10 minutes later, you get the report from the announcer, and she yeah. nailed it. So you yeah. must uh, – yeah. are, are you so, a football fan? Do you I, watch these injuries? I'm, I, I try not to watch for injuries. I try and stay, I try and stay away from that when I'm home. But I, I see them, and I know what, what's going on most yeah. of the time. Uh, Tim Peterson, who is the uh, – did I have it right? Owner, operator, but you, you're still seeing I, patients. I see patients yeah. most of the week, yes. Yeah. And you have, what, a crew of five others? There's uh, seven of us in the office. Uh, everybody, all the other therapists are part-time. Um, I have a couple of physical therapy assistants, mm -hmm. uh, two other physical therapists that work with me. Um, the kids that are coming out of school now, this is something that probably most people don't realize. Because I'm old, uh, I, was, <laughs> I was one of the first groups going into college when they were just beginning to move to a master's degree. Oh, okay. but, but the physical therapists that come out of school now all come out with their doctorate degree. I mean, their, their level of training, they're trained in reading x-rays, MRIs, they're trained, um, they, they do cadaver dissections just like the, the medical students. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and I did that back when I was in school. I mean, they, people don't realize the education. They, they think of therapy as exercise. Um, and it, it's so much more than that. And there are so many different facets to physical therapy. You're, you're familiar with me in the outpatient setting. Right. There's pediatrics. There's school-based therapy. Mm -hmm. There is uh, rehabil inpatient rehabilitation for people who have strokes and are still at the hospital mm -hmm. level. Uh, there's nursing homes. Yeah, I had a, a crew that, that helped me uh, tremendously yeah. when I was over at Charlton. Yeah. So. There are some therapists who specialize in women's health. There are a whole uh, facet of women's health issues that, that they deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, there are work hardening programs where people focus just on people who've been hurt at work. And, and uh, I worked for a company one time, they had a whole warehouse. And they had firefighting equipment and ladders and buckets and dollies and people who were trying to get back to work. They'd have the firefighters get into gear and be climbing ladders and carrying dummies oh, up wow. and down. So wow. uh, there's a, physical therapy is a huge profession. Um, and I've only experienced just a little portion of it in my little world. I'm always surprised when I talk with my daughter. You know, I'll call her and say, hey, I got this pain. And the, the last thing I had, I think, was bursitis in my hip. Yeah. I thought there was an issue with the hip replacement, yep. but I went to my, my surgeon and he said, he took x-rays, he said, no, it's fine. The hardware is fine. You got yep. bursitis. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. But I remember she was telling me about the, how this muscle's connected to that muscle. And how do you keep all this? <laughs> <laughs> how do you keep all this in your head? It's just like a mechanic or anybody else. We, it's what we learn. It's what we do on a daily basis. So. Right. And then the exercises that you uh, you pull up these uh, what's the word I want graphics or yep. whatever that that you send us home with, yep. um, are, are there are there certain exercises for certain injuries or is each person is each individual different? Everybody's different, but there are patterns that you learn. Okay, um, you know there are like I said rotator cuff shoulder problems. It's almost always weakness in the rotator cuff. So there might be 
20 or 30 rotator cuff exercises for me to choose from in my head, and maybe another dozen or two that I've forgotten over the years that are buried in the back, but there are patterns of things that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you a story that, that when I first started, I remember it's probably my first month on the job. There was a, a young guy who said, oh, I've been working for a year. And I looked at him and I had only been about two weeks working. And I said, do you feel like you know something after a year? <laughs> Because you just, it's, it's like having to think to breathe. When you first come out of school, you're thinking about everything. Right. But, you know, you develop patterns and, and, you know, you get used to methods of doing things. And I know everything you had me do, uh, and I don't remember all of it from the, from the, uh, the stroke was eight years ago, believe yeah. it or not. And, but it always, you always kept it interesting. I, I talk about, you know, he would set up cones on the floor and I had to do a little slalom backwards yeah and so it, it always made it interesting yeah. i guess that's a key too right well, well we want it to be challenging so you know one of the complaints that I, i've heard from people over the years is oh they just have me go in and do my home exercises we try never to do that i mean you, you'll do some of your home exercises because a lot of times people are doing them incorrectly so we have to review them okay but we want to keep it so that we're progressing we're challenging you that we're we're, we're moving on to something new, that we're goal-oriented in, in what we're doing with people. Hmm. It keeps it interesting for you, and it, if you're coming in doing the same thing over and over again, you get bored too. Yeah. So uh, I'm looking, the, the advice you would give us then is, is the number one, keep moving, right? Keep moving. Yeah, got to get off the couch, and yes. I, you know, we could all afford to, I guess, lose a few too also, right? <laughs> you did say that the cameras here were slimming, correct? Uh, yeah, we have cameras that, that the camera takes away 10 pounds. Awesome. Yeah, unlike the other one. But that, <laughs> that's not helping us, right? No, uh, no. no. Uh, you know, it, it's difficult. We, we're a busy society. We're, uh, I was just watching something on the news today and uh, we, had, we had it on the clinic and a woman was saying, uh, my child's team wants me to volunteer. She said, I have four children. I told them I, I, I can't, I don't have any more time yeah, between right. work and all of my kids. She said, I'm happy to give you money to have somebody come and help or do what you need me to do. She said, but I, I, I can't. She said, I can't even keep up with what I'm trying to do. We're busy and, yeah. and we get that. So, and again, that goes back to the home exercise programs we give. People are busy. They want something that's concise, that addresses what they're there to see us for. Um, uh, and if you can do a little bit every day, you're that much better off for is it. Is there any answer to you know, how much exercise do we need? Is it is it three times a day? Is it walk thirty minutes? Or is... uh, it's it's individual for everybody, right? Um, you know, if you can get those ten thousand steps a day in, that's great. If you can't, um, try and do just a little bit of like I said, stand up, sit down is a great exercise. Take right. two water bottles, lift them up and down. Strengthen your shoulders I a little to, bit. I used to do curls with like a gallon of milk. Curls with a gallon of milk. Anything take that, it out of the bag, do a couple of these, then put it away. Anything that, anything that you have in the house can be used. As long as you have a little bit of resistance, you do a little bit, you do it to a little bit of fatigue, it's beneficial for you. My wife, whenever we go to Walmart, she always parks over there to make you walk <laughs> and number one it's get your steps in. number one she has a nice truck she doesn't want ding <laughs> but number two it's like come on you yeah. need to walk that's right so instead of parking you know yeah. in the first space near the door park a little further away yeah gotta yeah. get your steps in gotta get that's key huh yeah that's why we all wear those watches now we've all been <laughs> we've all been sold on ten thousand steps a day so we gotta have the watch and i guess those watches help with cardiac issues too right uh, they can they actually can, sense if there's a problem some of them can sense if there's an arrhythmia there's the apple watch will tell if you fall and it can call somebody that to, to say hey you know your aunt has fallen and it, or it'll yeah. dial 911 for you this they're amazing at this point yeah you told me the other day, uh, just just a few minutes ago, that you were actually using a cane not too long ago. I was. I had a disc go bad this summer, early in the spring. Um, I, so can you like take care of yourself? Can you diagnose yourself to, and come uh, up with? To a certain extent, I, I I wasn't even quite sure that I had a disc problem at that point. Okay. Um, and I had an amazing team of doctors that that I work with on a daily basis, not on a daily basis, but on a regular basis. Right. That, that helped kind of move me through the system. And um, once we got my pain under control, um, my exercises, I could, I could exercise. Hmm. I, I was at the point where I couldn't even lift my foot. 
Ooh. I was at the point where one day I was in the shower crying because I couldn't move out of the shower. So, you, you know, when you get that bad, it, that's beyond kind of my what I can do much for okay. you at that point. But okay. once that pain is under control, sure, now I have my flexibility, my strengthening, my core exercises I have to do. That's key too, right? Your yeah. core? Because it yeah. helps with so many your, issues. Well, your core, you know, we, you tend to flex and extend and you have what we try and talk about as a neutral position, mm -hmm. which is the most comfortable position of your spine between arching your back and flattening your back. Okay. Um, and a lot of times we move and don't think about it. So our back is doing a lot of this as we reach. And so one of the things that, that's very good is to work on stability exercises and teaching people so that I can hold my back in this comfortable position and I can reach up without my back suddenly arching. Okay. Uh, or I can bend and I can keep the curve of my spine without having my spine flex all the way down. Okay. As you flex forward, it pushes the jelly in the disc backwards. It's the weakest point of the disc and that's why you're always taught to bend your knees. Yes. You don't want to bend and lift something heavy this way because it jams that jelly back against the weaker side of the disc. I could spend all day here talking to you about all this stuff. That's why they have their doctorate in physical therapy now. <laughs> Tim Peterson from Synergy uh, Physical Therapy, located at 147B Washington Street in Fairhaven. That's right across from the uh, police station. Yes, it is. All right. And uh, the website is synergyptfairhaven.com. Yes. All right. Tim, thanks so much. Thank you. I'll have to... Uh, I'll have to give you a call about a tune-up, maybe. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> I'll break out the cones. <laughs> Our thanks again to Tim Peterson from Synergy Physical Therapy for joining us. I forgot to tell him how much I enjoy doing squats. He always had me do so many squats per session. and I hate squats. I don't know about you. But if you have a suggestion, I still have quite a few people I'd like to have on the show. But if you have a suggestion of someone you think we should know about, we should sit down and talk with, please let me know. You can send me a message on Facebook. I'm also on X, formerly known as uh, Twitter, at Pete Braley. Or you can email. It's thepetebraleyshow at gmail.com. Again, that's thepetebraleyshow at gmail.com. As we always do, we leave you with a thought for the day. And our thought today, don't worry too much about how you're going to get it all done. Get started. Learn as you go, and it will all come to you. Action creates momentum and momentum energizes you to keep going. All right. No matter what, we hope you go out and make it a great day.